Okay, welcome guys. This is Mountain Clark Firing Range. Here's my awesome trike driver. I got a tricycle here. There's 100 pesos from my hotel, Apollonia Royale. It's about um, 10 minutes away. Or 10 or 15 minutes away. Mountain Clark. Okay. The reason why I like this range so much is one of the most professional ones I've seen and used in Philippines. I'm not exaggerating. Some have a low safety standard. These guys are pretty good. The facilities itself are huge, as you can see. They cater for a lot of people. Let me move. Okay. And they, they also do professional training events. That's why it's so huge. So they can do uh, firearms instruction, um, qualifications as well, qualification training, you know, for the military and the police. Okay, guys, the good old MP5. Safety check. I'm gonna drive fire with this pointing down range in a safe direction. Okay. So we all know it's good. Um, yeah, classic, absolute classic. I love this one, I missed it. I missed it so much, I have to come back and shoot it again. The staff are telling me this is actually an Israeli one, Israeli manufacturer. Okay. It doesn't have many markings at all. It's, it just says nine millimeter on this side and then that serial number up top. But, um, so I wasn't sure what it was, very minimal. They refinished it, they painted it, that's their job. And obviously it has the full auto trigger group. So if you come in, you got your safe, semi-auto, three round burst, I love that, and full auto. Uh, very low recoil, it's a very nice shooter. It's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, let's see if we can open this bad boy up. Now, it uses HK push pins. I actually mistook them for bobby pins. I thought they were like locked, bobby pins, but just give it a push. And we'll see if that even comes out. Okay, so here's the first one. As you can see, I'm not sure if the camera can focus. It's just got a little captured, captured pin on the side or wire. They even just they actually become known as HK pins, even if it's made by another manufacturer. So, we just need to give this a hammer. So this is the last one, it's a bit tight. We're just gonna use a punch. And we're gonna give it a little bit of a hammer. Just to get it started. Okay, over here, as you can see. Hopefully I don't screw it up. Yeah, let's take it out. I'm learning too, by the way, guys. So I'm, I'm sharing this, maybe some of you might find this interesting. Okay, see that rear unit? It's just like sheet metal. Now it's funny, um, the Germans, it was created by the Germans originally by Heckler and Koch, or Heckler und Koch in German. Heckler und Koch, you have to use the accent. Or Heckler and Koch in English. Um, some people debate how to say it, just say H and K. Now the point is, the Russians were making stamp sheet metal AK-47s, so they said, hey, how can we make a stamp sheet metal gun? As you can see, the receiver's all stamp sheet metal. But ironically, Germans being Germans, they made it very complicated, so it became more expensive to make. Um, the technology in this is used in the G3 rifle and other similar, like Setni, uh, Spanish Setni rifles. Uh, obviously here in the MP5 submachine gun, and there's even like the HK21. Forgive me, there's different machine guns that use this system. But anyway, this I think it's roller lock delayed blowback. There's a technical way to say it, but anyway, see? And what's great is like, you can get aftermarket accessories, put AR-15 style stocks or folding stocks, or no sock at all, whatever you want to put on it. Okay, so. Uh, and also while we're at it, the magazines. These have been um, very nice. These are like anti-tilt design. For such an old design, before the Magpul P-Mag, before these fancy magazines for AR-15s, they already worked out. But hey, it's just a stamped sheet metal pistol magazine. I mean, submachine gun uh, magazine. Basically, it's pistol caliber. That's what they call it, sub guns or submachine guns. They're not real, a real machine gun. And, um, Oh, these days they're being called pistol caliber carbines by the civilian uh, civilian shooters. Anyway, I'll stop gabbing. As you can see, my cameraman's doing a great job, but I'm maybe a little awkward. He just pulls off. There's your captured trigger unit. Typical HK, they became famous for this. It's also a trigger unit, meaning you can just pull this out. So imagine in the military or police, an armorer could just pull this out, put a new one. If they wanted to change the, the like, to have two round burst or just single shot, uh, or, or just to maintain it, look at the springs. Yeah. Very nice. They're suddenly known for being very reliable, very simple. Um, if they do get dirty, you just get a rag like this, wipe it. Okay, so you guys shouldn't be afraid of maintenance, just don't be afraid to wipe it. Just wipe it down, put some fresh oil. If you don't have any fancy oil, put motor oil, okay? I said it, don't be afraid to use oil. Um, anyway, again, hopefully I haven't broken it. <laughs> okay. Use your recall spring which is, seems to be attached. Oh, sorry, I should have brought that back, yeah. Sorry, the charging handle, push it back. 
and it'll help guide it out. There you go. This is one of the most expensive pieces uh, of the gun to manufacture. Well, it is the most expensive piece to manufacture. Typically, the bolt and the barrel. Look how complicated it is, but it's very, very nice. I won't go too far because I don't want to screw it up. See how it's on, it's on these little lock tabs, these skid pads? That way it's less friction. And these interface inside here. You can see, see this section here, if you come over here? This rides inside here, so it locks inside. So that way it's got a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of play, but it won't go anywhere and just recalls backwards. Now the problem is being a pistol, it goes bang, blows back, bang, blows back. Um, HK said, how can we delay that? We want to delay that to reduce recoil, but put more energy coming out the barrel. So it was very, very clever engineers. Can you see those rollers? See, it? see how those round pieces there? So those rollers lock inside the chamber. Very, very clever. That way there's no need for a gas piston. This is not a piston. This is just a, an actuator for the charging handle and just extra weight to slow the bolt down. See? And they, I'm not sure if the camera can focus. And see how they close like that? See, very clever. So as it goes into the chamber, it goes, gives it a little push, it locked in, bang, and then the recoil, whoop. You know, or maybe it's the reverse. Sorry if I got that wrong. But uh, I'm noting out, you know, it's very, very interesting. So because of that, yeah, no need for direct impingement gas, gas tubes or gas pistons and, uh, and it absorbs the recoil. Now it's not perfect. They do get fouled up. You've got to keep them clean. And um, they can still break and malfunction too. And hopefully I haven't broken this one. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to put this bad boy back together. Yep, can you see that? The rollers were getting stuck, yeah. Just, just like what I was saying. See, it goes like that. If you look at the rollers, and they push and then lock inside the chamber like that. But anyway, I'm not sure if that's setting up. My fingers are in the way. Okay, so let's put this bad boy back together. There you go. Even the, the charging handle went all the way forward. Okay, it's fine. Again, if I haven't broken it, if I have, I guess I've bought it. Um, oh, what am I doing? Okay. There we go. I nearly lost the guts, my god. But um, yeah, I just find it interesting. Some of you may find it interesting too. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll use the small pin here, I guess. Oh. I'll put it around the other way. I believe you can put it either way, huh? It doesn't matter which way, yeah. yeah it just seems like that side. Okay, so I'll do the same here. Oh, well, buttstock, thank you. I nearly forgot the buttstock, okay. See, pretty simple. Once you get used to pretty simple, which is nice. And obviously for maintenance, yeah, give it a good wipe. Give it a good wipe, give it a good scrub, and then put some fresh oil, okay? And I'm just gonna do the same. Give it a, give it a little tap. A little bit of encouragement. I can feel it. You don't have to hit it hard. It's just to give it a little push, just because it's a little stiff. And that's a good thing, just to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. I'm just going to function check it to make sure I haven't broken it. <laughs> okay, dry firing. And I'll just make sure the safety works. Yep, see, safety's working. And put it back on the semi. That's good. That has a surprisingly good trigger. Sometimes they can have really mushy triggers. HK aren't known for the fancy triggers, but it's good. It's clean. Very clean. All right, guys, I'm going to stop nerding out. Oh, and here's the buttstock actuator. So if you turn, turn it down, yeah, make it compact. All right. And vice versa, you press that tab, and then you can pull it out. Uh, yeah, very cool. Very cool. I want to, I want to take this home. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Okay, as you can see, we're shooting cheap lead reloads with a Teflon or painted coating, just to reduce lead exposure. As you can see, there's a marring. That's from the fluted chamber of the MP5. I forgot to mention that. The chambers have a flute cut to help increase reliability. It was a band-aid fix just because there's different types of nine millimeter ammunition around the world. So it just ensures that it can extract a bit more reliably. Uh, the staff are telling me they reload fine too. It doesn't affect it. it, yeah, it leaves a little mark. As you can see, it leaves a little marring or scarring, whatever you want to call it. But they still reload fine. They still reload and work just fine, okay? So you don't need to be too paranoid about it. I mean, your particular chamber may vary, depending on model, and maybe, it, maybe it's even worse or less, but yeah, it's not a problem.
dry-fly first. I'm just going to do a little dry-fly practice. Okay. It's more fun, guys. That way you're not wasting ammo. Just get used to how it feels, get used to the trigger. You know, maybe even adjust the buttstock, blah, blah, blah. Just get used to it, whether a pistol, rifle, anything. So. Ironically, it's so compact, you know, you could do the whole magazine, all grip, blah, 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 very flick. That's what's the advantage, you could have it under a coat, or, you know, you could flick it up very quickly. Um, so, ironically, I'm, I'm actually finding it a bit weird because I've been getting used to rifles. But anyway, enough gabbing, let's get shooting. I'm going to start off with semi-auto, single shot. Uh, see that? What just happened? It's still unloaded. The magazines are so full they cannot go on a seated, uh, forward bolt. Okay. So I'm gonna open the bolt first. Yeah, now they're looking. Don't be afraid to give it a tug as well. Put it in and give it a tug just to make sure it doesn't fall out. That especially applies to uh, rifles. Okay. And now I'm gonna go hot. Okay. It's ready to go. Just getting used to just warming up. You can even drill like this because I want to stay pointed down range. I want to stay as safe as possible. You know, you're patrolling, looking around, and your friend can call it and say up. Oh, you know, but just say you're, you're on guard duty, you're patrolling, and... and the idea is to go slow, guys. Go slow. It's not Hollywood. You don't have to go fast. Just go slow. It's just training. It's basically just a long pistol. Yeah. It's basically just a long, easy to shoot pistol. But hey, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I really want one. Okay, and we're out. Check the magazine. Magazine's good. Okay, so I'm gonna get a burst. Why not? Back again. Very controllable and three round burst. I'm actually holding on the lower torso of the target. One, two, three. So you just drift them up. Very nice. That's it. And we're up. Oh, we had a malfunction. That's okay. Just try for it. Or just test for it. Okay. I think um, maybe around, bound up on the magazine. Yeah, I think it's the magazine, but it's okay. They're getting old. We'll finish up. We got a couple left. We got a couple left. But I think it's a bad magazine. I will just finish up.
Come forward. Check it out. Okay. It is an older gun. It is full auto. It does get a lot of use, so it happens. Oh, that's it. Sorry, it was just a shell casing. So that's okay. That's okay. I guess that was a failure to eject, or maybe. Okay. okay. Well, that's why you check. One more came out. One more came out. Okay. Well, that's why we do the whole check it a hundred times, you know. One, two, not just to be cool, we want to make sure there's nothing left. Okay. Uh, we have one more mag. We're just gonna use up the last couple of rounds. We've got a couple of rounds left. Okay. I got carried away with burst fire, so uh, these are my last rounds. But uh, anyway. I hope that wasn't a malfunction. Okay. I'm gonna go full auto, just use them up. There's only a couple. So she wrote. So, yeah. Very nice, very smooth, uh, low recoil, very nice shooter. Man, I'm gonna steal this. I'm gonna steal this. <laughs> no, very nice. MP5. Okay, so here's the MP5 target. I was actually aiming here purposely, so I think I was shooting low. When I was going for the headshots, they, they were dropping low, I think. I, I don't know for sure. Maybe they went high and they missed it altogether. And then obviously for full auto and burst fire, I was actually holding here. I was holding here and just letting him drift up, letting that muzzle rise. But yeah, very nice. It's still tight. Look at it, combat effective. Even under burst fire or full auto, it's still, still combat effective. Hit all the, all the right spots.